There's a medieval beast which, if the court records of the time are anything to go by, caused mayhem in medieval communities. I wonder if you know what it might be. That beast is the medieval pig. Now, for modern viewers, that you might think of as pigs as pink, soft, plump oinkers with short legs that aren't gonna cause anybody much problem at all. Those are the result of hundreds, if not thousands of years of selective breeding. The medieval pig is little more than a domesticated wild boar. Maybe a bit less violent than a wild boar, but still covered in fur with longer legs much more like a, a wild animal. They were smart, they were quick, they had tusks, and they had spines along the back. They had bristles, very, very useful for the medieval period. They were also quite good at rooting around in the landscape and destroying things. So they had to be looked after. <laughs> Most people kept pigs. 80% of people lived a rural existence, but of course 20% of people lived in towns and cities, and they kept pigs as well. In fact, almost all kept at least one domestic pig, often several domestic pigs. They were supposed to be kept in the backyard of your townhouse, really, in your garden or your yard, as they are literally called today. The idea was you feed them your domestic waste, bits and bobs they grow quickly it takes about two years for a pig to to reach slaughter weight in the medieval period remember they're not nearly as big as modern pigs and then you got yourself some tasty bacon however a lot of pigs were turned out onto the streets into the public streets and this is where the chaos uh, becomes and unfolds because medieval pigs rooted around root around in the landscape for roots, for beech mast, for acorns, and um, they'll get their sustenance from all sorts of things like that. In the urban environment though, they're going to do the same. They're going to dig up roads, they're going to steal food and waste that's thrown out onto the streets. And this was incredibly common. As a result, pigs caused a big nuisance. Now, if you were a respectable person, you could give your domestic pigs to the municipal swine herd. Yes, there was a job called municipal swine herd, and they would gather up the official pigs and they would drive them to a good place for those pigs to eat, the local woods where panage would be available to them, the ancient rite of harvesting food, wild food from the woods. And those swine herds were paid a little bit of money to do that job for lots of different people. So you paid a small amount of money, your pigs were looked after, they were brought back in the evening and uh, you kept them back in your yard again. That was the legitimate way of doing it. But of course, lots of people didn't want to do that. They just wanted their pigs to make ends meet by, uh, by grubbing around in the, in the detritus of the town, which they did very successfully. Now, they damaged things. They grubbed up fences, they cause mayhem at market days. And in a lot of places, it's quite difficult to identify whose pig was who. Now, I'm not actually sure from my research how you actually identified your pig. There were some places where they tried to put in rules to control pigs, and some of them were quite draconian. There's a couple of places where it appears that if your pig was uh, in the street, it could be summarily killed. And uh, if you wanted it back, you had to pay a certain amount per leg, basically per quarter. That was a penny per quarter. And typically the fine, you got the carcass back, the fine was fourpence. So if your pig was caught, it was killed, and you could get the meat back. That's uh, pretty harsh. There were several exceptions to that as well, though. So for example, in Cambridge, 
it appears that pigs were forbidden to be on the street except for after dark. So there was basically a pig reverse curfew. No pigs were allowed on the streets between seven in the morning and six in the evening. But after that, I presume households just chucked their pigs onto the street to fend for themselves at, at, uh, at night time. There are other sort of slightly strange and wonderful medieval rules as well. St Anthony's Hospital in London was the only place that was allowed to turn its pigs out on a particular street. But there were stipulations in that those pigs had to be identified by a little bell. So you had pigs with bells on going through the London streets in this particular area. I have no idea whether other people's pigs were identified by bells or by collars, by branding maybe, or even just writing on the pig. I, I don't really know. There doesn't appear to be any record of how pigs were identified or belonged to a certain person if they were turned out madly. The reason pigs were kept is fairly simple. They turned household waste into incredibly tasty, incredibly valuable meat. And for a society that didn't have easy access to supermarkets or home delivery of food or anything like that, it was hugely important to have that source of protein. But they caused problems. And I think that's wonderful in a way. I think we should all live closer in proximity to the natural landscape and the domestic landscape, and that includes all the domestic animals. They bring so much joy to your life. Unfortunately, they'll probably dig up your lawn as well. Mm -hmm.